Understood. I've got it.
bit of healing for you. Understood. Next time. Just How about under I? This mission has come from the Granville Church. You will be heading to Westfield's Baladin Wilds. Wilds is not a misnomer. The region is all but uninhabitable. The land there is barren and ill-suited to agriculture. A true wasteland, plagued by natural disasters and infested with monsters. A recent tornado laid waste to one village and many of the local children were orphaned. Escort the priests to Baladin and bring the children back to enter the care of the church. This is to be our mission, while Tagari remains occupied. There's no need to be preoccupied with Tagaria, Fred. Right now, we bide our time till the right moment. We must be patient. And besides, we're mercenaries, are we not? We simply go where we're told. But is our assistance actually required? What became of the children's parents? It is reported many died trying to protect their young. I wonder what brought them to that place. It's such a desolate and dangerous region. Their village borders the frontier. The only region of Diofield Island that remains completely uninhabited. It's one of the Granville Church's holiest sites. All those tales are simply nonsense. People are foolish to believe in such fanciful legends. Foolish or not, let's head for Baladin. Greetings, Blue Foxes. Greetings. You're Catherine, of the Templar Knights? Yes. I'm to be your guide for this mission. I'll also be on the mission. The name's Estalt Yufa, mercenary. Estalt is a magicker whose services we have often engaged. He will fight alongside you. I hear the way ahead is plagued by monsters. Is the boy really up to the task?
please don't underestimate me because of my age. I wager I'm far more capable than some of you. As long as we don't have to look after you, all shall be well. Andreas, are you listening? Forgive me. I overheard the priests talking about some room that the children would be taken to. Did you hear for what purpose? No doubt they plan to introduce them to some of our scriptures. Does that thought trouble you? Have we some kind of problem here? No. I don't think we've heard the end of this. We've been asked to undertake another escort mission. To rescue the children, we must ensure that the carriage arrives safely at its destination. This area is infested with fearsome monsters. Be sure not to get bogged down in battle. Fighting talk. I like it. You'll make an excellent decoy. What? Pay her no heed, Estolt. Her barbs belie her prowess on the battlefield. Aye. The beasts are closing in. Everyone, prepare for battle! out. The enemy unit has been eliminated. All right! On my way. Next target. Very well. Deploying for battle. Reinforcements approaching from the flank. We must protect the carriage. Leave it to me, Catherine. Very gallant of you, Astolt. Everyone, watch your rear. I'll do my best. You've come a long way since we first met Rickles. Now, just keep calm. Focus on the enemy. Okay, Iska. I won't let you down. Let's get going. The 
enemy unit has been eliminated. Understood. You go back to the attack. Next target. Moving out. Deploying for battle. Yet another foe defeated. This isn't really my style. Moving out. The enemy has been eliminated. Done. Next target. Deploying for battle. Moving out. for battle. The enemy has been eliminated. Very well. On that, is that all you have? Seize victory! That was quite a display, Estolt. You weren't too bad yourselves, but it seems we're not done just yet. This next wave of enemies seem more cautious. As though they're scoping us out. Keep an eye on the rear, and let's clear this up, quickly. Moving out. Understood. I think this will do. On my way. Eliminated. I'm not stopping here. Thank you for your assistance, Blue Foxes. The children have been escorted out of the wilds. They are now safe under the care of the church. Safe from falling prey to monsters, perhaps. What are you implying? Human experiments. Testing the forbidden arts. Creating magic monstrosities. Uh, that's... that's preposterous! Calm now, Walter Quinn. You don't have proof of any of this. Perhaps not. But I've heard plenty of rumors about the church's humanitarian missions. Tell me, Catherine, do you know where the orphans taken in by the church are living now? <sighs> 
Forgive me. I must return to the High Temple at Harleg Lin. She left in a hurry. Should we be concerned? This may not be the moment, but you're a very special unit. I'd like to join, if you'll have me. I have no objections. Your command of ancient sorcery was most impressive. But Fred, he's still a child. Exactly. Better for him to escape the church's clutches before he becomes another experiment. What? You think that's what they had in mind for me? It's quite probable. After all, no one would look for you if they reported you dead. It's true. And your magical ability would make you a valuable test subject. Damn them! My life is my own. Mercenary I may be, but I am no mere commodity. That settles it. I must break free of this hell. Then join us, but be aware that it's not an easy life. You may come to miss your hell. Try me. I wonder what happened to Catherine, the Templar Knight. You should have stopped her leaving if you were worried about her. Oh, I'm not worried, really. I'm unconvinced by Walter Quinn's claims about the church's dark side. Well, the room and knowledge. Not that anyone dares to openly accuse the church. Then again, if a Templar Knight were to give testimony as to what she knows... You mean... But even if Catherine were to spill the Church's dirty secrets, what does it have to do with us? It might be our chance to live in a society that doesn't unthinkingly follow the Granville Church. What's the plan, then? I'm simply theorizing, Iscarion, not planning. You tried to gain leverage over the church. Why? We ought to look after our interests, that's all. Our allegiance is to Duke Hende alone. What on earth are you scheming? We're mere mercenaries. Scheming? I was stating the facts, that's all. All for now, at any rate. Um... Having helped the unit rescue the Baladin orphans, young Magica Estalt Ufair is allowed to join the Blue Foxes. Meanwhile, fears of another Imperial advance prompt Alatane to open talks with the Alliance. The Alliance was formed in order to halt the Trovel Chovian Empire's relentless expansion. It contains dozens of nations, but its key members are the Republics of Verma, Aluge, and Porand. The Lord's Council chooses Duke William Hende as their representative to lead the negotiating delegation. The first round of talks takes place in Southfield with representatives from Verma and Porand. The Blue Foxes escort the Duke to the summit and are tasked with ensuring his safety throughout. Alas, the Duke rejects the Alliance's conditions outright 
and negotiations are suspended. This rejection infuriates a vermin diplomat by the name of Dalmazio. And he is seen cursing the Duke's name as he leaves the summit. Listen. Dearie me. Excuse me.
I am afraid that talks with the Road Tailor lines have broken down. The terms they proposed were simply unacceptable. True shame. And these terms were? They demanded exclusive jade extraction rights from the Gaian mines for 50 years, no less. A preposterous request. Dukende! What's the matter, Lorraine? Alliance troops advance, and on this position, no less. This man will brief you on the situation. My name's Castavir Bernal, a knight of the Republic of Verma. If I might be so very bold, Duke Hende, this is a predicament of your own making. The Alliance's diplomats lost great face when you summarily rejected their offer. Frankly, the offer they proposed was simply unacceptable. If you've come here to have me reconsider, you are wasting your time. These Alliance troops, they've been sent as an unofficial message. You are surrounded, but I will aid you nonetheless. Why would a vermin knight betray the Alliance to assist us? Simple. Because my country has already betrayed me, I can no longer return there. Given the circumstances, we've no choice but to trust him. If he's a spy, we know what to do. I have requested military support from the Royal Forces stationed in Southfield. We must buy some time until they arrive. Whatever happens, please stay inside, Duke Ende. We will protect you at all costs. Duke Hende must be captured alive. It is only the mercenaries who are to be slain. He's brought a sizable force. Let me handle this. I'm familiar with their tactics. Very well. But if you make a hindrance of yourself, we'll leave you behind. <laughs> Don't underestimate my abilities, Islander. What are we to do now? There's no way out from here. The Alliance has strength in numbers. Alone, its members are weak, but together, they overwhelm. They excel at scale and attrition. In small skirmishes, they tend to struggle. Our rear should be safe. We make sure our forces stick together and don't get split up. Given our lack of numbers, it would seem we have no choice but to take out the enemy one by one. Well, we can't allow them to enter the camp. We've erected a barrier, but it won't hold forever. Yes, we must pay attention to the defensive side of things. To some extent, anyway. That's my kind of fighting. Let's get started, shall we?
eliminated. I'll show you the fruits of experience. Very well. This isn't really my style. Got it. Target Come. eliminated. Let's get going. Seize victory. On my way. Target Come. eliminated. The Vanguard has fallen! Second unit to the fore! Drop the bridge! All units, fall back! They're using bridges to create new routes. Trying to split our forces, no doubt. We mustn't allow them to do so. We shall focus our forces and put your hole in their lines. You used to be a knight, then you cast a bit. What can you tell us about the Alliance Cavaliers? They're fast, but lack strength and tactical prowess. Even more so now they've lost their best man. That is precious information indeed. Thank you for your insight. You can thank me later. believe how many of them there are. Is everyone still holding out? Aye. No worries there. Wonderful. Then we go again. Once more, into the breach. Go. Let's get going. Moving out. Moving out. Target in the zone. That's an attack. 
Understood. Next target. Let's get going. Target in the middle. It would seem I've grown stronger. They've gone. Well, look at that. You saved my life. Think nothing of it. You aided us in turn. But why were they after you in the first place? I was conveniently accused of a crime I didn't commit and sentenced to death. Rigorous judicial procedures don't apply to knights far from home, in a foreign land. Tragic, I'm sure. Now, shall we head back for Central Field? We have dawdled long enough. I've been wondering, Castavir, why did the Alliance double-cross you? It was simply a case of a lizard shedding its tail to save its life. Verma has always been the Alliance's dominant power, given its military and political might. However, a cloud of suspicion has long hung over our delegate. There were certain rumours. Aluge and Porrand sent spies to Verma to investigate whether those rumours were true. Only for them all to be killed, murdered with a modern magical weapon, smuggled from the Empire. What was this weapon? A gun grit. It's a powerful long-range firearm that uses small iron bullets. Now, it just so happens that I know a thing or two about gun grit handling. And so the shadow of suspicion fell on me, and it was decided that I should be executed. And? Was it you? <laughs> yeah, best not get into that. Negotiations with the Alliance break down causing Dalmazio to summon his guard and unleash them on Duke Hende. The Blue Foxes fend off the attack and Dalmazio returns home with his tail between his legs. Yet the unexpected breakdown of discussions angers the mediating Southfield nobles. With House Redditch out of the picture, House Engram became openly critical of the royal government. Playing into the Southfield aristocrats' fears that they would lose control of their territories. Before long, House Engram had succeeded in organizing a rebellion to overthrow the monarch's rule. In response, Duke Hende orders the Blue Foxes to nip the nobles' uprising in the bud. Can I tell you something? Indeed. I hope no. Um, 
What is it, Estelle? I was visited earlier by some Templar knights. They wanted to hire me. And not just part-time like I'm used to, but as a full-on member of the group. The church has many donors. I've heard that their coffers are deep and their knights well paid. You may very well be better off with them. Don't wind me up. Why would I join such a corrupt organization? You don't want me gone, do you? I would not stop you. You have your independence as a mercenary. Oh, I see. However, they surely know that you are wise to their dark inner workings. Accept their invitation and you may be executed upon arrival. What? The choice is yours. You can go if you want. No, no way. I'm a blue fox through and through. Is something the matter, Fred? Oh, I was just reminiscing. Reminiscing? About the time we spent together in Leicestershire. With our old friend. Ah. He picked up everything I taught him so quickly. Hunting, riding, fishing. We'd spend days out in the fields together. He had a weak constitution but such a sharp mind. What's brought this on all of a sudden? Come on, Riaz. It's just the two of us. There's no need to be so wary. All right. Well, I'd say you're the main reason Levi got on so well at the House of Leicester. Really? I always thought he trusted you more than anyone. No. I was just his attendant. <laughs> well, aren't we both ever so modest? I just... I'm not even sure what's true anymore. I know what you mean. Has there been any more news about the situation in Tagaria? Donovar should be able to answer that question. Yes. I did make a few connections within the Imperial ranks during my time as a knight. According to my source, General Zavatian has left the front. His Lieutenant Osmaldo is in charge. There's no sign they're preparing for a new advance, but we must remain vigilant nonetheless. And what of the royal government? They remain content to watch and wait? Yes, though the Lord's Council has put conscription orders in place throughout the kingdom. Numbers alone are meaningless. Unmotivated soldiers do more harm than good. Aren't the people keen to take up arms? That they might avenge Prince Ivangar? Not keen enough to risk their own lives, it seems. 
The faction conflict is also a significant factor. Faction conflict? What do you mean? With Ivangar Shatham dead, the two remaining heirs are vying for the throne. Victor Shatham is second in line, and Staris Shatham is third. The Lord's Council has split into factions, each of which is trying to influence the succession. Needless to say, the faction which backs the right heir can expect to be amply rewarded in due course. This means that attempts to reclaim Tagaria may be more competitive than cooperative. With the faction seen to have contributed most to the victory, sure to win immense popular support. <laughs> the Council couldn't have picked a better time to start squabbling amongst themselves.
How about this? Oh, you might. Mm -hmm. How right? I can't. Oh. Oh. This mission will take you to Grost Crypt in northern Southfield. That is where the nobles of Southfield are gathering to make preparations for their insurrection against Centralfield. Your task is to prevent this rebellion. I used to play in those catacombs all the time when I was but a little girl. Some fools like to claim that they're haunted. Have we managed to determine the instigator of this insurrection? Yes. He's called Zachariah, a fixer and middleman for members of the upper class. He has allied himself with House Engram and has been recruiting local nobles to their cause. All this in retaliation for the breakdown of negotiations with the Alliance? Perhaps. In any case, it is a futile effort. I am surprised the Duke has reacted with such urgency. Wouldn't it be because he's planning to expand his sphere of influence to Southfield? Excuse me? There would be nothing untoward about it. Duke Hende is on the Lord's Council, after all. He's a representative of the Kingdom. Yes, well, it doesn't explain why the nobles of Southfield would try something so utterly foolish. I suppose we'll soon find out. The blue foxes! Why are they here? Did they catch wind of our plans? Keep your composure. They're giving us an opportunity to test our secret weapon. It's been a while. But nothing's changed. I feel at home here. It feels like something could jump out at us at any moment. Hey, cut that out! You know I'm no good with the spooky stuff. Forgive me. There is something about this place, though. Perfect for Hatchimut Path. Quinn mentioned that this place is rumored to harbor drifting souls. That reputation ensures no one comes close, and so the plotters have been able to act in secret. Ah, then we're not actually expecting any ghosts. All right, so no worries. <laughs> I wouldn't be so sure. Maria said nothing regarding the rumor's veracity. Count me out of this one, then. Come now, enough of that, you two. We need to open the door. Which means we'll first need to secure that turret over there.
very well. The enemy unit has been eliminated. Thank me later. Go. Target eliminated. On my way. Here I come. Understood. I won't miss. The foe defeated. On my way. You can thank me later. Great. It's open. Now we need to capture those two turrets in order to open the door within. There are some enemy patrols in the area. It would be wise to take them out one at a time. Got it. Oh, what have we here? I won't miss. Very well. This isn't really my style. Captured a base. Very well. the base.
so. You were here after all, Zachariah. I don't recall inviting any foxes to my domain. Really? You made so little effort to conceal your plotting, I thought you wanted us to come. Huh? I'll teach you some manners! I owe you for last time, you know. Oh, I'm going to have so much fun with you. So you'd better enjoy yourself while you can. You'll be begging for death soon enough. Enough of your prattle! This ends here! This isn't really my style. Deploying for battle. Unit has been Very well. Moving out. Deploying for battle. Understood. Got it. of experience. for battle.
deploying for battle. I'll show you the fruits of experience. Take that! Moving out. I'll take you down. Deploying for battle. Let's get going. Very well. Here I come. Moving out. Damn it! Right. Uh. I can still improve after all these years. Now or never. What the? Some creature has burst out the ground. Is it a wyvern skeleton? No, it's far too big. Was it them who summoned it? to me what's happening Zachariah <laughs> 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 any longer. This hex is too delicious. Walter Quinn. <laughs> yes? What is it? Walter Quinn, are you listening? Of course. Why are you pulling that scary face? Enough of the little girl act. You summoned the dead right in front of us. Ah. You noticed then? Of course we did. When were you planning on telling us about your powers? I never knew I had them. It's just something that happened on impulse. How did you know how to do that? I must have a knack for these things. Does this mean that it was in fact you who made the corpses rise at House Redditch? Well, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have been able to make our escape, no? But does that mean... Did you kill the Redditches? Your own family? 
I wonder. I don't know what to say. Surely you're not all that surprised. Look, let's talk about this later, shall we? I'm keen to leave this place behind. The nobles' insurrection is thwarted by the Blue Foxes, and its leaders are killed in battle. Not wasting any time, Duke Hende dispatches his troops to the now leaderless Southfield. And before long, the vacated domains have all been taken under the Duke's control. The Duke immediately introduces stricter laws as well as higher taxes. He also sets about eradicating any local customs and beliefs which he deems to be dangerous. Having grown used to light touch governance, the people of Southfield find such moves oppressive. Indeed, many choose to relocate to other parts of Diofield to escape from the suffocating policies. A number of the recently displaced Southfield natives come to Central Field, advocating the adoption of democracy. This new political movement gains followers among those dissatisfied with the royal government. Riots ensued, instilling fear throughout the government. The Blue Foxes are brought in to quell the chaos. You've known Walter Quinn for a long time, Shivat. Were you aware of her talent for necromancy? Necromancy? It's a type of ancient sorcery secretly pursued by the church. It revives corpses as puppets. Oh, well, uh, she's been obsessed with ancient sorcery hexes since she was little. She'd sometimes sacrifice animals for them, and she'd show not a hint of remorse. It was chilling. Did you leave her family's service because she frightened you? <laughs> no, that wasn't the reason. It was all becoming too much for me. The Daglance traders throwing their weight around, the Engrams cozying up to Porrand. Not fond of responsibility then. I'd have thought a mercenary would appreciate that, but perhaps I got you wrong. Yes, perhaps you did. Castavir, I wanted to ask you something about Verma. Certainly, as long as you don't expect me to spill the Republic's secrets. You mentioned that there were unsavory rumors about the Vermin representative. What are they? <laughs> well, that certainly qualifies as a secret. Still, I suppose I've already renounced my citizenship. 
In short, it's thought that he pulled some strings to ensure victory in the election. Forging ballots, that kind of thing? Worse, he abducted opposition supporters. This caused outrage at first, of course. But soon people were too scared to speak up. He was the only candidate on the ballot in the end. Some would say that still counts as winning on merit. Mm. Before long, he was one of the Alliance's top dogs, but he could rise no further. After all, such a divided Alliance is no match for the Empire. Really? Then perhaps you ought to have defected to the Empire instead. Perhaps so, but easy victories have never interested me. And I value freedom above all else. That's why I came to Deerfield, an island I knew nothing about. The perfect place to clean your conscience after all the dirty work you did. <laughs> well, I'd rather not think about that. that smell? Well, what a charming greeting. And it's probably the scent of death you're noticing. I've been using a lot of necromancy of late. No, it's not that. It's something else. It's... Mm. Oh, I know what it is. This smell is sometimes produced when synthesizing herbs for ancient sorcery. It's rather seductive, isn't it? I've heard it can put some people in a trance-like state. Unbelievable. Not content with corpses, you intend to bend the living to your will as well. Don't be ridiculous, I've done no such thing. Unless you're saying I've charmed you. You're a fool. Don't you know that hexes invariably invade their caster's mind? You must know that frequent use will corrupt your own existence. Ah, oh, so you're concerned about me, are you? Of course I am. Well, you needn't worry. I am strong enough. Nothing can corrupt me. Baselessly confident, as always. Mind that you don't fall prey to your own pride. You're one to talk about baseless confidence. <laughs> Perhaps we are birds of a feather in that regard. Have you seen Walter Quinn today? Yes. She's her usual self, despite everything. I can't believe she can be quite so nonchalant. Why are you so alarmed by her powers? They could be invaluable in battle. Oh, that hex was incredible. There's no doubt about that. 
but I worry that her moral compass has become distorted. Perhaps that's just the way she is, Fred. By the way, she'll keep us on our toes. Indeed. All right. Your mission today is to suppress a riot in Hodlum, a slum in Centralfield. The doctrine of democracy, invented on the continent, has begun to take root among the commoners. The reason for the sudden spread of democracy in the slums, is this due to refugees from Southfield taking up residence there? Yes, the people's growing discontent is manifesting itself as violent riots and looting. You must urgently restore the peace. Bear in mind, however, that the rioters are not soldiers. They are civilians, unaccustomed to fighting. It is vital that casualties are kept to a minimum. Understood. Why should rioters receive special treatment? An enemy is an enemy. I, for one, shan't be going easy on them. Through our recent excursions, the Blue Foxes have built up a formidable reputation in Central Field. It is likely that some rioters will immediately surrender their arms upon your arrival. That's right. All the more reason to avoid bloodshed. I don't make concessions in battle. They may be vulnerable, people coerced into participating. So you will have to on this occasion, Walter Quinn. It's their own fault for being completely powerless and spineless. Why should I feel any pity? What's wrong with you? As mercenaries, our livelihood is in violence. Sometimes we must take lives, but Duke Hende ordered for no unnecessary deaths. We must uphold that. Let us depart. Hmm. No one told me we'd have to fight the Blue Foxes. I'm out. There's no way we can beat them. You think this is a game you can quit any time? You want to die a dog's death in poverty instead? But what chance do we stand against them? They're disorganized. Without a strong leader, they can't fight as a unit. That alone should teach them that democracy is an unrealistic ideal. Is it? Under the right guidance, I think it could make the world a better place. Guidance? Iska, the only guidance commoners need is from their king. This isn't a political movement. It's a pretext for outlaws to stir up trouble. Come on, Fred. People are risking their lives to express their opposition to the royal government. Have you not thought about why that might be? Mm.
All they want is a normal life for their family and friends. Their methods might be wrong, but I wouldn't dismiss their plight because of that. We must seize control of this place and ensure our defenses remain unbroken. Stay focused. The enemy is right in front of us. Aye, aye. I'm well aware. I'll say this but once more. Please do not be reckless, Walter Quinn. Me? Reckless? Perish the thought. Blue foxes. We're dead if we don't take them out. There's nothing more terrifying than a man with nothing to lose. And a whole mob of such men is even worse. It won't be easy trying to quell them. But quell them we will. Calmly and carefully.
They're even bringing out the Cavaliers. What a warm welcome this is. This looks like fun. Maybe it's time for me to show what I can really do. How many times do I have to tell you? I don't take orders from you. Baldequin, Iscarion, stay focused. The enemy's approaching. Thank me later. You can thank me later. I won't miss. Understood. is under attack. Things wouldn't have got so messy if we'd fought with our all from the start. On my way. Push forward.
Have you lost your mind? Oh dear, they must be even weaker than I thought. Walter Quinn, our orders! That's the last one, I promise. Last one? How many have you killed? Maybe ten? Ten? These are ordinary people. Fooled into disorder by the hollow promise of a better life. They may have broken the law, but they certainly don't deserve death. Look, we stopped the riot, didn't we? What's the problem? The problem is that the Blue Foxes have slaughtered defenseless civilians. That's what people will be saying about us now. We've lost the good reputation we've worked so hard to earn. But a bad reputation has its advantages too, no? You did this on purpose, just to make life difficult. Let's pick this up later, Fred. We have to go. Ugh. Over six months have passed since the Trovelt-Shovian Empire captured Tagaria Naval Base. Several attempts were made to retake the base during this period, but Commander Osmaldo Selica's garrison has proved impossible to displace. Osmaldo's forces are clearly superior, yet he has made no attempt to push on beyond Tagaria, a state of affairs that left the royal government perplexed as to his motives. In the meantime, the Blue Foxes have been put to work suppressing riots in the slums of Central Field. While doing so, Walter Quinn shocks her comrades by ignoring orders and deploying lethal force. On the one hand, Walter Quinn's violent conduct achieves the desired result. The terrified rioters promptly surrender. On the other hand, it severely tarnishes the Blue Fox's reputation, rightly or wrongly marking them as ruthless killers. As a result, their patron, Duke Hende, has also become a target for criticism from other members of the Lord's Council. Though this did little to discourage him from continuing to strengthen his grip over Southfield. Before the month was up, the Duke had become the de facto ruler of the entire region. Lorraine, we require an urgent update regarding the situation at Tagaria. Of course. But may I ask why? We're going to retake it. What? what D Duke Hende hasn't mentioned any such plans. He's preoccupied with Southfield at the moment. A preoccupation that is causing his position on the council to grow weaker by the day. It's not a problem for us yet but it will make life difficult in the long term. However, if we liberate the base, well, 
Then the Duke's detractors would have to stop their carping about his involvement in Southfield. And have you thought of a strategy? The royal army appears to be at a loss thus far. I have a strategy, and I'm confident that we will succeed. Hmm, very well. Thank you. How about this? Why, yes. Anyway. Understood. Andreas, I have a question for you. What is it, Tanova? How do you go about selecting members for the Blue Foxes? The unit contains knights, mercenaries, foreign soldiers, thieves, with capable warriors, one and all. I find people with talent, that's all. Indeed. I doubt I have ever seen such a force. Not even in my time in King Regald's guards. You defended King Regald? Yes. Our ranks were full of honorable knights. But over time their dedication waned. They began to act for their own profit, thinking only of ways to best their competition. You left out of disgust for what they had become. I did. And now I pray that the blue foxes do not fall prey to the same ailment. We shall not. You seem very certain of that. I have not a single doubt. I've got quite a tale for you, Andreas. Have you now? I'd been hoping to speak to you too, as it happens. Who were those men who visited you earlier? They work for nobles who recently moved from Southfield to Centralfield. It seems they've made quite the fortune from some sordid dealings and are in need of bodyguards. It was a request for the Blue Foxes? No. They wanted me to abandon the unit and take some able hands with me. So I put your name forward as well. If you leave, I shall follow. I have no intention of leaving. They say they'll pay double. It could be quadruple and it would make no difference. Very well. I know a man who can't be convinced when I see one. I have no interest, but if you want to leave, I shan't stop you. No, I'm staying. I'm not about to leave just because you've told me I can. I do what you will. I've not the attachment to you that you may think I do. 
that much is plain, but you'll come around eventually. Who's this, Rias? You, Marita Barrias, a bounty huntress. She had been set to join the army as a private, but I offered her a place with us instead. She seems capable. Oh, I'd say you were. Wouldn't you, you, Marita? Yes. What about her background? She used to serve a noble house in Southfield. They were traders. They lost their estate, and Eumerida decided that the Royal Army was her only option. I see. Well, good work, Rias. I never knew you had such an eye for talent. Hey, what do you mean? Indeed. Well, 